Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift, the online cycling platform that makes training fun. Volta Catalunya, stage two, 202 Ks. We actually go into France, into Perpignan, the last oh, 60 Ks or so. Hills in the middle of this stage, but it was going to be a flat sprint. There was crosswinds again, but a drier day for the riders. But we had Jack Haig abandon for Bahrain victorious. He lost 17 minutes yesterday. We had Sonny Colbrelli. Good news from the team, at least, that he's being monitored and that they couldn't quite or haven't yet diagnosed the exact issue. But Sonny Colbrelli looking in better shape, thankfully, than this time when we recorded yesterday. But this stage, for the sprinters, one of Benji's riders. I don't actually understand this. Apparently, he's a PCM guy. He's gained this race. And he's actually pulled something off. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, Jonas Wiederberg was in the breakaway yesterday. Took six bonus seconds yesterday, which posted him into a position 13 GC on four seconds yesterday. So that's a position where you can still achieve stuff. So he probably realized that yesterday evening. I'm on four seconds. What if I go in the breakaway on stage two? Let's take a look at the parkour on stage two. Oh, there's two intermediate sprints in the middle. What if the breakaway? What, I'm, what, if, what if I'm in the breakaway again? I could get six potential seconds there, and then I'm two seconds ahead of the current leader, Matthews. But obviously, Matthews can't get bonus seconds then, so can't podium, and Pacher can't win the stage for that to happen. So he went in the breakaway this morning, he decided to do so, he was in the break with uh, three riders, I think uh, Adrian Moreno was in the breakaway with him, and Alex Molinar once again, so that three-man breakaway stayed up for quite a bit. They came to those intermediate sprints, he lost the first one. He got seconds, so we got two bonus seconds, which on paper puts him closer. Two seconds behind Matthews virtually at that point, if we don't count the gap that they have on the peloton. And then they get to the next intermediate sprint, and he needs to either get two and have a better position in the stage, which won't happen than Matthews most likely, or get three seconds to have one second ahead of Matthews in GC. And he takes the intermediate sprint. So from that point onwards, it was all depending on finishing in the front group, plus. Match is not podium and Pacher not winning the stage. How likely did you see that based on the team of uh, Matthews in this race? Very likely because they brought Groves here. And if they're not going to go for Groves on this stage, then why bring him here? So it was looking like once he won that second intermediate sprint, he was in pretty good shape. Like all that maths has confused me a lot. But yeah, um, a great plan from the young rider. Maybe he'll be on UNOX soon is he norwegian or if i just he came from unix actually oh, okay well maybe we'll go back if things don't go <laughs> go too well anyway before we move on to some of the happenings in this stage which it sounds like a sleepy stage right we're talking about gaming bonus seconds I actually kicked <laughs> off at the end speaking of kicking off i did stage four of the tour of watopia just before well at the end of this stage actually it's called dirt dripping it's got like gravel segments actually been my favorite one so far the queen stage stage three less uh less fun but this one was really good what's the status of your your pain cave setup benji baby yoda drinking the zwift the zwift bit on is yours yeah. are you any upgrades planned or just keeping it simple I think I'll keep it simple for now because I've got this issue where I've got way too much stuff for this room and it's like all in one corner and then the other corner is the pain cave. So if I add more stuff, it will become troublesome. So for now, I'm very happy with how it looks. I, I can settle myself on the bike like I did before we got to uh, the actual action today. I uh, rode, uh, I think it was the TikTok map once again. I enjoy that one because it's relatively flat. So I can watch TV shows while I'm doing that. And uh, I enjoyed that. So yeah, I survived and I'm here. So that's good. Yesterday, we went and looked at a house here in Andorra. It's at the end of a 5K, 7% climb. And we went and looked at it. And I, was, I said to my wife, I was like, this needs to have a, an entire floor for Zwift because I'm not going to be doing finishing four rides a week <laughs> up 5K, 7%, but it does. So I don't know, swings and balances. But yeah, I can't wait. I want to have like the ultimate Zwift pain cave next year. But thanks to Zwift. As always, for supporting the show, if you want to check it out, swift.com for your free seven-day trial. Back to this stage. First thing was 
I think Cesare Benedetti, I'm just going to assume it's him for Bora. Three guys got caught on the other side of the motorway. The motorway yeah. split. It went from pole dividers, soft dividers, to a cement cinder block dividers. They got caught on the wrong side. They're in the other lane. I was thinking, luckily, I'm speaking about it in a joking manner because they actually had closed off the lane they went into. But I was thinking, holy shit, what if there's oncoming traffic? And it's like this thing when you, I do this all the time i'm the biggest i'm always guilty of it when you're on a ride and you're pretty lost and you're like i'll just find it i'll just keep riding and find it instead of just stopping <laughs> looking on the map retracing your steps and fixing it and then you make it all the way worse they just kept riding hoping the road would divide again and they could go back to the peloton and it never did there was no emergency turn or anything and eventually they had to stop i think it was maybe biscara feels i'll tell as well and hop over the divider and get back. It was like funny now, but yeah. Um, but Yates, Benji, the Yates brothers, they love to be at the back of the peloton. We're going into a flat section, crosswind nervousness, exposed, crash. We didn't see if he crashed. He's caught behind. Would you have dropped? I think Bex did the best they could, actually. I can't criticize Bex for how they played it. You can't drop Matthews and Groves back. Yeah, it's a, it's a big dilemma, you know, because you're thinking about GC with Simon Yates. You're thinking, how many riders can I drop? And that's basically everybody except for the rider you go for the sprint and perhaps also keep his lead out up there. And that's the choice they went with. And I guess I can't criticize it, but I guess it would depend on how the stage turned out. Let's say that Groves and Matthews don't get anything out of the stage. We don't know yet. We haven't gotten there yet. Well, they could have been criticized heavily if... If Simon Yates was losing 45 seconds because of that on today's stage. So they did pretty well in having riders directly stop, though. They were quickly with him to help out. And I swear that the gap went down from the point they had a gap to the finish line. But yeah, it it was proper chasing because not only did that happen, and that crosswind section started kicking off at the front as well. And I'm not actually sure which team that started kicking it off because I swear the group was just suddenly in two. Yeah, well, there was another crash. And then, and, and this is the thing. There's crosswinds, there's nervousness, there's fights for position, they're going through road furniture, someone crashes, and then because there's crosswinds, it exacerbates everything. So Yates is now chasing G2 with Verona yeah. pacing Balor in G1. Sivakov is there for, uh, well, I'm guessing Carapaz because Port didn't start this morning either. Rodriguez had had a flat with 20 Ks to go, and he'd come back and spent Castroviejo and Kwiatkowski. So I think it was Dennis for Yumbo for Dumoulin. Yep. Arkea had Nairo there in good position. They were pacing, and Kofidis for Guillaume Martin also helped out. But the teams help out when the crosswinds are on. We're now into 13, 12 Ks to go. The gap's 35 seconds to Yates. He's the GC favorite for this race. The race was on when we don't even talk unwritten rules. You know my view on it. Just slap it on the front as hard as possible. No one really helped Jumbo too much. Whether they could or yep. couldn't, I think Ineos couldn't because of they spent riders. Movistar, yeah, they'd probably be scared. they get criticized again. RK were also done. So Yumbo did it. Gap stable. Good job from Bike Exchange. They got their way to group two, but then they were sort of left at 35 seconds. And then it came into the sprint. We've got Bauhaus here, Hofstetter, Groves. We presumed Matthews, who's in the leader's jersey, would do the lead out for Groves. He did. We go into the last left-hand bend. 150 meters to go. Matthews in front of Bauhaus, which I think made a big difference. Groves on Bauhaus wheel. Groves and Bauhaus went head to head at Toronto last stage, and Bauhaus got the better of him. Bit of a more open sprint here. Matthews finish. Bauhaus kicks. Groves very, very late. I'm talking last 35 meters comes out of Bauhaus wheel and nails him on the line. Bauhaus, I think, with 10 meters to go, thought he was going to win this and takes his first World Tour victory and back-to-back -back World Tour wins for Bike Exchange. They are having a purple patch and it was a good day for them regardless of the Yates losing 30 seconds. So Benji Narsen, I often, it's usually me having to do the formal written verbal apologies. I, I've done it yeah. already at some point. Oh, I no. think there was not. Nah, I want it again. Saudi Tour? 
<laughs> but that is the okay. comfy sprinter race. <laughs> so Benji in the Bex preview said Groves would win a race and he's a glorified Conti sprinter. Now I've already I think I said UAE would win like five races and they've already won twenty. So I'm obviously uh, my hot takes always worse. Do you have anything to say? I'm very sorry to Kaden Groves and his family, to everybody that he ever came across, <laughs> that every Prime person that supported him, the Prime Minister of Australia. The kangaroos that live in that area, the spiders, the snakes that I'm too scared of when I go there, and the uh, losers of the emu war back in the day in Australia as well. <laughs> so I'm afraid that I had it wrong. He's not a glorified Conti sprinter. He's a glorified pro Conti sprinter. <laughs> I agree. No, because at the end of the day, this is a World Tour race. This is uh, credit to Bike Exchange. And if you're yep. wondering where's DeMar, DeMar would have cleaned these guys up. He's quicker than them right now. We saw the Catalonia sprints last year. If you want, and no world tour win is easy, but if you want a less competitive top level world tour win, send your good guys to Catalonia. And Bike Exchange have done that, and they've got two stage wins in a row. Groves ahead of Bauhaus, Hofstad a third. Quick step road for Ethan Vernon, the young British sprinter. He came fourth in Milano. Penalva for Burgos, I think he came second in a Valenciana yeah. sprint behind Moschetti. Matthews did a lead out seventh. Kroosvike, eighth. What the hell? Van Danabiel, ninth. <laughs> Scale I first think, at 10th. I think eight plus is not sprinters, okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Matthews, I think, sat up. So, yeah. It was about six guys going for the sprint. And obviously, Matthews with the sixth does not take any bonus seconds. Jonas Wiederberg takes the leader's jersey for tomorrow. One second ahead of Matthews. Seven seconds ahead of Hofstetter. Simon Yates loses a lot more time. Hindley's on 44 as well. Carthy's on 44. He missed that. And Yates is on like 40 seconds or so. Same with Butrago. So not good for, for Yates. Yep, that's certain. Is it too much? Nah, I don't think so. We've seen Simon Reckon? Yates uh, gain time on some climbers in Paranese lately. And I've got the feeling that there's options in this parkour to gain time again. It won't be easy to gain 33 seconds i think on the nearest gc rider that matters for gc and i think that the ones he's arguably going to have to put time on that might be difficult as a quintana will not be easy to gain that much time on this sparkle when it comes to carapaz it depends on his form during this week because we've seen early season that it hasn't been great johannesson is one of those riders that could or could not stay ahead of him depending on how well he does this week but we can't, can't talk about that because he's the enemy of the podcast according to you and Chicone, that's like questionable case where on paper he should be able to do well, you know? You know who's going on the podium that no one's even said his name? Sam Allman. Well, Poles. Yeah, that's optional. Andalusia winner, easy climbs, punchy if it's a group sprint, as we saw when he beat Luchenko. Chavez? Uh, he, it's, can he string two days in a row? Now, we do have tomorrow is the start of the first two mountain stages uh, finishing in uh, up to La Molina. You look at the profile and you're like, how can they get, how's the eight's going to take that time? Well, it's the first of two days in a row, 161 Ks. Yes, it's like 5.6 Ks, 7.3% to finish, but they've got climbs all day before. It's actually from Perpignan, then they cross west towards me. They go to Pucferda and then do a loop around La Molina, and it's like a rolling finish. Movistar will want to keep it together from Bala Sprint. Bahrain, I think, the same, but I never know what their tactics. Like, Dylan Turns could just win this from the group, maybe. Lopez took time on this before. The weather's a bit iffy. If you want a preview of the next couple of mountain stages, it's on the lanternrouge.com.au website, written by Carlos Ozzels this morning. Uh, he went through how hard these climbs are, what the gaps we could expect, etc. But tomorrow, Benji, I think Yates wins. I think he's going to be pissed okay. off and goes hard. I think he uses their number game because they've got a user in the same time, I think, uh, as pretty sure Soler is also looking good there as well still. Yes, True. I think Bennett and Almeida as well. So they've got four candidates to try something with. I think it's more likely that Bennett is a domestique in this in the shape of four, Costa is here as Domestique as well. They've got three riders that can do something here. Almeida, Soler, Ayuso, and one of them will try and get away, I think. Because if you don't attack with three riders, then why have them? True. Breakaway, we have a lot of people that have lost a lot of time, but the question is, are they sick? And that's why they lost time. And, you know, Haig was sick, he's pulled out. 
is Jan Hurt, who lost 17 yesterday, is he sick? But Or did he just miss the split? And he's actually good enough to go for GC. Oh, sorry, go for a stage from the break. Jan Hurt, if that's the case, lethal in the breakaway. We also have Mikel Nieve on 6 minutes 30. I actually think he won't. He could. This is where Damien House is a little bit underrated, Benji. He could. He would be able to win this from the break and keep the Australian one, two, three going. Bruno Armirail from the breakaway, Group Armour. Look out for him. Very, very strong. Nielsen Powell apparently is here. I did not know that. Um, again, solid breakaway rider. I, it's, it's impossible to predict, Benji. We remember Paris Nice. I was like, Maida, Jay Vine, and they all DNS the next day. Yeah. Uh, do we know what happened to Luke Blab today? Because he lost 19 minutes. Mate, he looked a bit. I don't know if he was working for C Rod to bring him back after the puncture. Yeah. It's I don't know. But that was Volta Catalonia. I think Yates is going to light it up tomorrow. And unfortunately for him, but fortunately for us, him losing time today makes it more likely to be a spicy stage tomorrow. Look out for Tom Dumoulin. Yumbo are riding as if they mean business at this race. He wasn't good at UAE on the climbs. Maybe they know something. I don't know. It's climbs that really suit him. He's a big man. He's not supposed to be able to do this. Could come out of Kirby's lips again. Anyway, that was Catalonia. Other news today. Matthew Vanderpool says, I intend to finish the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France this year. Now, we said him doing MSR, Milano San Remo, was not too bad. It seemed to be ahead of everyone's schedule and a last-minute decision. But ultimately, it was seven hours on the bike. Not much climbing, which he'd been doing in training anyway, allegedly pain-free, rehabbing his back injury. Now he's wanting to do back-to-back Grand Tours, presumably the cobbled classics, and finish them. He said, I want to finish them. Surely now there's some alarm bells for you, Benji. Ah, yeah. I think it depends. Like, I hope they know what they're doing. That's how I see it is because... Obviously, doing the Giro Tour as a combo is already hard, but the classics before that and so forth, also pretty difficult to combine all that. And yeah, it's a lot when coming back. And it reminds you a bit of the Nemco thing straight to the Giro. But on the other hand, I've got the feeling that Vanderpool took a more, less rushed way approach into the sport again. So I don't know. Are you afraid that it's going to be too much? Yes, I'm very concerned (laughs) that it's too much like are they he's done one race and they're like back-to-back grand tours who else is doing cobbles plus back-to-back grand tours benji vincenzo like, nibali okay that <laughs> yeah like that's a heavy load and he's the leader at those races i they just signed him to an extension i think till the end of 2025 i obviously am not his doctor um i don't know what's what their doctors have said, etc. I don't know whether he's in pain, pain free or not. I my gut feeling is that this is a bad idea from that perspective. I want to mention that Dirk Hedlo and also the back doctor of the team were surprised that he's already doing so well that it's all gone so well so far and that yeah it's gone so well in Milano San Remo as well. I um Honestly, I'm not sure how much contact those two had with the team since the accident, though. So I'm not sure if this is the bag doctor that helped him recover and so forth into the sport again. So that's the, the questionable aspect of that article that I found on Sportza. Now, I think when it comes to doing the Giro Tour, I do want to mention that we did our Giro preview a few months ago. And while Vanderpool was not on the start list, I think you compared every single hill stage to Vanderpool could win this. He should do the Giro. Are you happy with that? Did I say that? Yeah, you did. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said every puncher should do the Giro. And <laughs> and then if one of them takes pink on the first stage, I look I look smart. But you're right. Like the first stage is an uphill drag finish. It's absolutely perfect for Vanderpool. It's if he can do what he did on Britannia, Murder Britannia, yeah. stage two of the tour ahead of the most stacked puncher field ahead in Alaphilippe's face on two ascents, then the Giro should be light work for your boy. And he should be the heavy favorite with now Pidcock out of the Giro going to the Tour apparently and who's looked a bit, un- well, who looked unwell at 
uh, Milano San Remo, Vanderpool immediately becomes Melia Rosa favorite. How long he can keep that for? I think a while. I can't remember when the first mountain stage is. Maybe stage. Do they go five, from six. Hungary to Sicily? Down to, I think it's Etna, five or six. Yeah, four apparently. After the rest day, they go to Etna. Imagine he keeps it after Etna. Like I wouldn't. Etna was slow in 2020. I think it's a different yeah. side now. But yeah, I think. Do you think he should be out and out favorite for stage one? I think he should be a out and out favorite for the first stage. I haven't seen today's stage of Coppia Bartali personally yet, so I can't tell you if that was a an uphill finish and whether he won that and so forth. So I'd have to take a look at that, take a look at Coppia Bartali this week and see if similar finishes arise. But on paper, a peak Vanderpool or a near peak Vanderpool should be a favorite on a stage like that, an uphill finish in that uh in that uh, in Hungary, as simple as that. And we mentioned lots of people. We mentioned Pitcock when he was still doing it, and on paper that should fit as well. Now for Vanderpool. Stage eight is also pretty similar. Reminds me of the uh Mudo stage we had in uh Tireno last year. I think it's less steep the climbs that are in that stage, but it's got a flat finish after some hills. He could also do something on those hills, try and get away there. So there's certainly stages in the Giro that fit this man. I'm just a bit scared with Giro Tour Double, like you mentioned, after having that injury. Giro Tour Double is the most difficult of the doubles when it comes to Grand Tours, based on the uh, experience of riders, at least they say so. That's why you don't often see GC riders trying to aim for the Giro Tour Double, except if they're Italian. So Vincenzo Nibali does that because he wants to do the Giro and also needs to ride the Tour de France. But you likely won't see that easily Pogacar do it. That's why he's doing the Tour alone. Or the first time he does a double will likely be the Tour of Vuelta or the Giro Vuelta. Because that's an easier double to do. Because Giro Vuelta is far from each other. And Tour of Vuelta is further from each other than the Giro Tour are from each other. And the Giro and is the usually is chill. a harder race, I'd say, right? Yeah, yeah. The Giro can be cold, just a harder race than the Vuelta. I mean, the Vuelta to win GC, high level last year, but... Yeah, do they still send Merlier to the Giro? I'm not sure what their indicative start list was. I thought Philipson to Tour. I think Merlier and Matthew van der Poel, it's a compatible combination. We know yeah. that MVP doesn't go for a bunch of sprints, doesn't really like it uh, to get mixed up, which is understandable. Um, and he has Worlds as well in September. Jeez, that's... It's a big year. It's like, imagine Benji when Bernal... Remember remember 2020, Bernal back issue 2020 Tour de France, yeah. Colombia. Imagine if he's like, I'm doing Giro Tour double plus our den leadership. Yeah. We'd be like, is that is that a good idea? <laughs> we yeah, would, is this, these guys are going to have a long career. I, I worry. I still yeah, think. and it's also, like you say, the history of back pains in the peloton the last few years, including Pino as well. It hasn't had... A moment where there's a rider that had serious back pain and then suddenly popped up and did so many great races after each other so i'm always a bit worried but let's hope he's the one that actually makes it through without too much trouble and is able to do it without any back pain and that we can see the best vanderpool at both races well i'm happy personally because the Giro start list was a little light particularly with pidcock now out and he certainly adds a lot of intrigue big name uh i don't know no sagan no quintana so yeah I don't know whether RCS also were interested in him going. But otherwise, I do see Bahrain Victorious have actually released a medical update whilst we were recording. Following the end of stage one of Catalonia, our medical team can confirm that Sonny Colbrelli suffered from an unstable cardiac arrhythmia that required defibrillation. I don't really, I don't know what that means for getting back on a bike again, whether this is comparable to the Ericsson or... Um, all other stuff, whether he needs something put in, I don't know, but hopefully he recovers well and um, we might see him on the bike back again. But anyway, Catalonia Stage 3 tomorrow, mountaintop finish. Thanks to Zwift, as always, for supporting the podcast. MVDP's recovery began on Zwift at the end of January and if he could progress that fast, Pagatch should be worried because I'm coming. Until tomorrow, <laughs> ciao.